Hey folks, Brad here. As you might recognize and observe, we've opened our scene on a low profile gas block and tube that came from the factory from Grid Defense slash Ghost Firearms. Now this unit is basically new. I ordered it April 15th. I received it April 24th. Got it nine days during the pandemic. I'd say that's pretty good work. They sent me an email asking me to go back on to their website and do a review on the product I purchased. I don't know that they want me to do that or not. You'll remember from my previous initial testing and accuracy video with this weapon, this upper, when I got it, I spoke about some issues that I was having with ejections and malfunctions and stuff that were related to the gas system. And although I got it to work essentially 99.5% of the time, I was still experiencing the one malfunction of if the weapon was being held lightly and not a real firm grip on the pistol grip at the rear, it would not lock back on a full magazine. I did a little further cleaning and investigation, went back out and shot it, and this is the result. This bright shiny gas tube has got an inch and a half or so of horrible fouling that's blowing out around it. Now, I don't know who makes this block in this tube, but that too fits in that block too loosely. And it's allowing blow by in a spot where it shouldn't have it to this degree. If I hadn't already cleaned the forearm, I'd show you the massive amount of fouling gray ghost material that was all over that burnt bronze that's coming from here. So, I've decided, you know what? I'm going to fix that shit. Guess what, folks? Spikes Tactical, baby. Low profile Spikes Tactical block and Spikes Tactical Mill Spec Gas Tube. Now, I put this puppy together and I'm going to tell you what. You can't get that tube to wiggle in that block to save your life. I tried. It went in damn near press fit. And it is staying solid. I got a feeling that's going to rectify any issue I might have with this gas system on this ghost. Now... Really, other than that, weapon's been doing a pretty damn good job. But I've got one other issue. I don't remember if they called it Cerakote, Duracote, or just Tough-Ass Krylon. But one can take a look at that deflection ramp on the back side and see that in less than 200 rounds, I have beaten that son of a bitch senseless. Now, Cerakote won't do that. I don't even know that Duracote will, but whatever this coat is, it ain't right. Now, I understand, Brad, what do you want for $283? Well, if you're going to blow smoke up my skirt and tell me how great your stuff is and how good a deal it is for the price you're giving it to me, I would at least try my best to make sure that... <laughs> You can't scuff the damn Krylon off the son of a bitch. In the first two days of testing. So anyway, yeah. And that's really my only bugbear really about it. Everything else on it's running fine. It's doing its job. You know, everything else is working. I can't really kick much about it. And once I change out that gas block and that tube, I think I'm going to like it all right. Now, there's one thing I will uh, piss and moan about a little. 
when I pull this gas block, there won't be any indexing dimple on the bottom of the barrel that allows me to get a good positive center lineup for this block. Now, that's kind of foobar as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I ordered a finished product and a finished barrel, in my opinion, really ought to have that indexing dimple for that first forward set screw so that I can set this block in the right position the first damn time. Because now I'm not real sure that this block ought to be up against the shoulder or just a tinge back from it. I'm going to find out. Anyway, more to come later on. The continuing saga of what happens when you play with ghosts. Bye. Hey, welcome back folks, how we doing? Good to see you, thanks for stopping by if you have. Uh, well, it's been a saga and I don't think it's over yet. This is just a little update on that grid defense ghost upper 300 AAC blackout. You remember from the last video I was talking about some issues of malfunctioning with bolt hold opens and failures to eject, things like that. And if you remember, I talked about the fact that, you know, the factory gas system had come loose while firing and that I had taken some remedial action, brought it home, got that block reset, got the set screws to where they would bottom out and actually hold it in place, got them torqued down, figured I was good to go. All right. Well, I went back out to do some test firing the next day um, one of the day, you know, that day I shot the video, and it ran really nice. I only had one malfunction the whole day. Um, and I, I can't say that I can attribute that to the gas system. It might have been another issue. I found a couple other things I'm going to have to look at. They're not on the upper. Um, well, anyway, so after I finished filming and got ready to roll, went home, got all that editing and crap done, got that out, and then went out the next day to test some different ammo. And while I was doing that, I said, well, I'll go ahead and put on a new optic. <whistles> Vortex Spitfire, baby. <laughs> mm-hmm. Got that DRT reticle. Even if the lights are off, the reticle's still there, and that's pretty damn handy. Um, so anyway, I'm sighting that puppy in, and uh, lo and behold, I I still experienced a few issues and I'm like what in the hell is going on here and only fired like 30 35 rounds got the unit sighted in and was just playing and it started doing that and I thought well okay we got to look at something you know maybe the gas block got loose again I don't know maybe it's out of alignment so I'll go home and I figured I might as well just go ahead and give it a quick cleaning overall as I was firing suppressed and then that way uh, I won't have to get my hands so cruddy. Well, I'm breaking it down, and I notice when I'm looking at the upper here on this forearm, and you can see it's all skeletalized and cut. Well, I'm looking at the forearm, and I'm taking stuff off, and I'm looking at it, and I notice under bright light that this whole forearm, from here all the way to the back and the front of the optic, are coated with a fairly moderate amount of fouling residue. I'm like, what in the hell is going on here? Now, this stuff ain't supposed to be here. So I get the forearm off and I get looking, and I look at the gas tube. Oh. And this is the factory gas tube and block. I get to looking at it, and you probably can't see it here. But this entire tube was coated all the way to the first bend with fouling that was just as black as the black on that block. Now that block's painted, made black. It ain't fouled black. 
if I hold it up closer, you might be able to see that ring of dark black. Now, that extended all the way to where my fingers are. Nope. Okay. Horse shit. And I'll say this video is not for children. Horse shit. So <laughs> I thought, all right, all right, I'll play your silly little game. Mm-hmm. Well, I just happened to know of a shop over in Oklahoma City, about 22 miles from me, called Firearm Central over on Northwest Highway in Oklahoma City. They have all sorts of wonderful parts, and they carry top brand names. And this is not a shameless plug. Ain't nobody paid me no money for this. I'm just letting you know, all you guys in my area that are in the know, that know how to do this, if you don't know about them, go find them. They're in the book. Well, I went over there and picked me up a Spikes Tactical low profile and a Spikes Tactical gas tube. Now, I brought that home, and let me tell you something. This unit right here from the factory, that tube is so loose that literally when you move that block in your hand and the angle that gravity pulls against that tube changes, you feel the tube move. If you shake it, you can hear it rattle and feel it rattle. And you can just move it back and forth in that block with no effort at all. No. Not how it's supposed to be. Very disappointed. No biggie. I know how to install gas blocks and tubes. So, I took that spikes unit, and I was very pleased to discover that as soon as I got ready to build it, it was very much a requirement that you index that tube and pinhole and put just a little bit, not a lot, just enough to make that dull surface look a little shinier. Lubrication, like CLP. Because you have to tap that tube in little piece of wood on top, this little file, ding, 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 ding. you got to tap it all the way down. That puppy, after you get that pin in there, even before you put the pin in, once it's together, you can't feel it, you can't move it, you can't pull it, twist it, shake it. It's as solid as if it was welded there. Mm-hmm, baby. So I went out. After I got that put back on, yeah, it works a lot better. Um, I don't, I don't know why they would put something like this on a product. Now, maybe it qualifies and works and meets their criteria for test fired in the factory. But out in the field for use, no. Now, it, it was a budget buy, $289. That's a damn good price. You know, a lot of other people with the same size barrel, the same kind of style and everything, you know, yeah, you $369, you $469, $529. It depends on who you like and how much you want to pay. So, yeah, $289 is a damn fine deal, but it's not a damn fine deal if your gun won't work. You can't trust your life to this. So, we're not talking about toasters or microwaves or CD players or digital TVs or even video cameras. We're talking about a piece of equipment you may very well have to pick up and defend your life with. No. Anywho, that way, I put that new block in there and that puppy runs fine. I am so happy. Now, my brother, yesterday morning, <laughs> he likes mine so much, he's ordered one of these uppers, the exact same one. And I went and got him the consecutive numbered brother or sister to that lower billet soda brand, and I'm going to build him one just like it. You won't be able to tell the difference. I went back to Firearm Central yesterday and got another block and another tube. Brought them home and built them. 
it's already set. It's sitting there with the other parts. It's going on the gun. When his upper gets in, I don't give a shit how the one on his looks, it's coming off and that spike stack is going on. And then I'm going to take this one and the other one and sanitize them up real good and get all that fouling off there and then I'm going to silver braze that tube into there and I'll have a couple of extras that'll probably do a damn fine job but I'm not going to that trouble right now but I'll have them if I ever need them you know, so I can take them to a gun show and sell them so yeah just a quick little update as to what's going on in the saga of ghost grid defense now I, I sent them an email and I haven't heard back. And I, I, I don't take umbrage at that because I'm an understanding guy and we're still in a pandemic and they're probably jumping through their own assholes to try and fill orders. I don't think they're ignoring me and I'm not saying they are. They're busy. I know. They're busy. But the reason I sent them an email is because they sent me an email saying, Hey, we noticed you bought one of these. Would you please log back in and give us a review? Um, so I replied to that email without giving a review. I just, in my reply, noted all the deficiencies and issues that I had found with this unit. Um, you remember from the other video, I talked about the material just chipping off here on the deflector ramp. How this coating is, has very little durability. Just switching off the original red dot I had on here to start out with initial testing. It's on a QD mount. Just a beep, get it. Losing coating where it pinned up. I'm losing coating here. I lose coating every place I touch this coating with anything other than my hands or gloves. Now, it's not just falling off of there and rolling off. It's not that bad. But in certain places, when you pull something off and look at it, you think, how many years have you had this, Brad? It's about a week. Mm -mm. I got a good buddy that does some really fine top shelf Cerakoting. I can have that fixed. It's no biggie to me. It's a truck gun. But still, come on, guys. And I talked about the gas system couple other things he told him I said look if you want to you want me to do a review I don't think you do because you don't want me putting that on your product page in fact you probably wouldn't allow it to stay there so I'm just going to continue with my review here in this form and anybody that has any questions or issues pop up shoot me a message shoot me a text on here I'll talk about it I don't mind so it's my property. It's my money. I paid for it. I'm the one that's having to fix it. Now, some people would say, well, you got a warranty. Just ship it back. No, I'm going to fix it. Fix it right. But I told them, you know, just in case they did want me to do a review on it, that it would probably be best if they uh, went ahead and cherry-picked one and went through it with a fine-tooth comb and made sure it was all up to snuff and hand-fitted and wasn't going to have any issues and was at a level of superior production high enough that they wouldn't feel any trepidation at all about sending it to some well-known gun writer that works for some Tactical Arms magazine for his review. Because I guarantee you I'm going to be brutally honest, extremely blunt, and I'm not worried about your feelings. But anyway, other than that, man, this barrel's accurate. You saw the groups in the last video. If you saw the last video, it drills. It's good. And it mounts on there. The mounting points, those lugs on the bottom of the upper, they are exactly the right size. There's no doubt that there's a lot of quality in this unit. For $289, there's a lot of quality in this unit. But you shouldn't have to sacrifice function for the quality of other things that don't affect function. So, yeah, okay, whatever. But that's the update on it. And gonna go out tomorrow and shoot a little video and 
See if I can't get that Spikes Tactical to really sing for me on this puppy. I'm sure it will. I'm hoping it will anyway. <laughs> anyway, there's more to come. And like I said, my brother's going to have one too. So we're going to have fun building that. We're going to go out and test fire them both. I'm hoping I can get a chance to get him up here when he's off work. And we'll just both be standing out there just blazing away with these. Now, I haven't had a chance to check the size of the gas port on the barrel. From what I hear from people who uh, other people say are knowledgeable about this specific caliber and weapon in pistol length barrel forms, especially with ten and a half inches, uh, the industry standard should be for the gas port size a .95, .93, something like that. I don't know that that hole is that big. I haven't been able to check it. I did ask the people at Grid Defense what the size of the gas port on the barrel was. And hopefully, if they do reply to me, they'll give me that information as well. But if that Spikes Tactical doesn't absolutely cure everything, I will go to a guy I know who's got the right equipment, and we'll measure that. And if it turns out that it's not the right size, it'll be only about 10 minutes before it is the right size. I'm going to make this puppy run and sing like Elvis Presley. I mean, by the time the day's over, women are going to be throwing their underwear at me to say, let me hold it. <laughs> okay, so that's the update on that. And hopefully, if you are in the market for one of these, or you've got one, or you've been playing with it, maybe having some issues, um, that's my experience. That's what I've found so far. So like I said, if you live here in the Oklahoma City area, go check out Firearm Central. If you haven't, they got some good prices and they got some good stuff. Uh, got a couple of really, really knowledgeable individuals in there. And Spikes Tactical, like I said, it's hard to beat. Man, that fit on that tube, I like that. And that's how it ought to be. Now, I brought that weapon home after test firing it and pulled that unit back off. And there was no fouling on the tube. There was no fouling on the exterior of the block. Even internal inspection of the inside of the block, at the port, inside the block, there was just an extremely thin ring of gray fouling just around the edge of the hole. And that's the only place. And that's perfectly acceptable. That is quality. That's what you want in something that you may have to drag out to defend your life with. Because that's how I see every weapon. These aren't toys. They're not play pretties. They're not something I stick in a safe and when the boys come over to watch football and we're drinking beer and chips, they go, hey, look at it! And don't know jack shit about it. These things go with me wherever I go. Because of my work and because of my hobby and because of where I spend my time. If I go to the mailbox, I've got a gun in my pocket. Every damn one of you that likes guns should do the same. So anyway, further adventures coming. I'm going to go ahead and get this posted up, get it set. More to come. Thanks for stopping by. Got any questions, like I said, or comments, feel free. Drop them right there in the comment slot. I ain't got no feelings. I ain't easily offended. I'll throw it right back at you if you don't like what I say. And if you do like what I say and we agree, well, hell, let's have a beer sometime. Anyway, thanks again. You guys have a great day. Remember, keep your social distancing. Keep your mask handy if you think you need it. Keep your hands clean. And for God's sakes, if you're going to scratch yourself, wash them first before you rub your eyes. Okay? <laughs> you guys have a great day. Thanks. I'll see you later.